Living Waters presents On the Box. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of On the Box. Tony Miano here along with Stuart Scott. Scotty, how are you today, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Scotty's uh, sitting in for Ray today. Ray and Easy are in an important meeting going over scripts for our upcoming trip to Israel, May 1st through 10th. If you haven't started Coming praying. Up quick. It is. About uh. 40 days away. You excited? Have you been to Israel before? Yes, a long, uh, quite a while ago, and it was very exciting then, and the thought of returning is very exciting. Yeah, I've, I've never been there. I'm looking forward to it. The folks who are going to be guiding us on our tour will be taking us to the historic locations not the traditional locations there are uh, differences apparently now chad you've been all over the world all over the middle east but mm -hmm. you've never been to israel have you no i haven't really look forward to it why awesome w why yeah because that's jesus land okay well, well <laughs> i'll be looking at the same water that jesus looked at you know yeah, that's right things, things of this sort so yeah you know i've uh, got a friend uh Jeff Barron, who's been through the Academy, he uh, goes out to the NoHo Metro Station regularly, and he's produced this gorgeous tract uh, based on uh, currency in Israel. Hmm. And on the back, it has Isaiah 53 and uh, Jeremiah 27, 13 in Hebrew. And that's it. You know, no full-on gospel presentation hmm. or anything, but the word is powerful. And uh, Isaiah 53 is, I think, a great way to you know, get the gospel to Jewish people. But... I know uh, evangelism over there is somewhat restricted. Uh, now, yeah, I, uh, we, we were just uh, with a group, with a church group, and got to see Israel. And I had not gotten on to the law and the gospel and those kinds of things. So it ought to be interesting. Yeah, we're going to be shooting for season five. Uh, mm -hmm. Ray's working on, I think Ray has the scripts done primary for the uh, He certainly episodes. has been working on them. Yeah, so. all right. Hey, uh, we have in studio today uh, J.T. Strong. J.T. is from Delhi, Louisiana. J.T.'s out here visiting the ministry for a, a day or two. It's probably going to go out with uh, Easy and Scotty and uh, or Easy and uh, Mark and their teams out in the Anaheim area tonight. So we're glad he's joining us. Uh, yesterday we showed uh, a lower third for a website for the Japanese GM28. Uh, it's now in uh, Japanese and. Uh, there's a website up so that you could share a link if you want to witness to people who are speaking Japanese, obviously mm -hmm. with everything that's going on in Japan uh, with the uh, earthquakes, the tsunami. the Wow, what a thought. Yeah. yeah. And so, but yesterday there was, some, we were getting a lot of feedback that about there were glitches with the email address we put up. And there are a couple of reasons. One, you have to notice the dot there between bit and uh, ly there at the beginning. And uh, the G in gospel and the J in Japanese have to be capitalized. The website is case sensitive. So get a look at that. We'll leave that up on the screen uh, during the intro here for a few seconds so you could write that down. Uh, but if you would like to send the gospel via the Internet uh, to folks who speak Japanese, here's a great way to do it. We'd encourage you to do that. All right. Uh, today's giveaway is Cowboys and Indian uh, DVD produced here at Living Waters. And uh, if you would like to win one of the three copies we're going to give away today, simply email us at onthebox at livingwaters.com. Onthebox at livingwaters.com. Full name, full address. Uh, and uh, uh, we will pick three of those. Brad. Brad, the illustrious Brad Snow, all things web design here at Living Waters, is uh, behind the camera today along with uh, Danny and Daniel. And so Brad will be picking. Picking three Come on, spit it out. Picking three people at random uh, to win that uh, later on today. All right, send us your videos, uh, your YouTube videos, uh, comments, questions to on the box at livingwaters.com. Someone did send us a rather funny video that we are going to try to come up with a spiritual transition for. Scotty says he has one. Uh, Chad, do you have one? Transition. Somewhat. We'll see. All right. I'm not too stoked on it. Yeah. You know, this transition thing. You don't like this, do you? It's not my thing. It's not your thing. You don't no. like it. No. But oftentimes we have to do things we don't like. All the time. Right. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. <laughs> well, That's all right. So, so we're going to try That's to transition marriage. into a spiritual conversation with that video. We haven't talked amongst ourselves, uh, so we don't know. You know. We may all end up with the same transition. This will be interesting. It will be interesting, yeah. 
And, uh, oh, uh, NASCAR coming up next week. Uh, we are still working toward that $35,000 goal uh, to uh, be able to fully sponsor that car uh, via donations. And some of you have been very, very generous. We appreciate that. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to watch the show yesterday, we showed the color scheme on the Living Waters car. So we'd like to show that to you again, just in case. It's gorgeous. It's a man thing, I know. But no, you know what? There are a lot of ladies that like NASCAR. How could you not like How that? How can you not like that? All hey. right, we only have 30 minutes. How long do you want to look at it, Scotty? <laughs> hey, man, is that that called Living Waters? <laughs> no. And then uh, the Million Dollar Bill, the Dale Earnhardt uh, uh, Celebrity Million Dollar Bill, which we believe will go like hotcakes at the track. I think uh, Daniel said we're going to take about 15000 with us wow. uh, that weekend. And then we're hoping the following week that we'll, we will be able to uh, make that available through the store mm. uh, to the general public. There are a lot of uh, evangelists out there who uh, go to NASCAR races or other kinds of motor sport races every week to witness to the people who attend those. And uh, we believe a track like that will be very, very yeah, it's effective. Got to be good. Yeah. Visit us at onthebox.us, the blog. Uh, we're getting a lot of conversation going there. Some of the things that we can't answer in detail on the program, we will write about on the blog. So we would encourage you to visit that as well. <sighs> all right. Got to do all that, Woo! huh? Yeah. All right. We're not jumping in the mailbag. We are going to Facebook. We, I don't know if we have a graphic for that. You can throw up the mailbag graphic if you want. Whatever. I love face space. Face space. <laughs> what, what, what a place for sophomoric drama, Facebook. Man. Oh, anyways. All right, first two uh, questions are from Fred Nelms out of South Carolina. And uh, Fred writes the following, I've had this happen a few times, and as recent as last night while out witnessing, a young man came up to me and started asking questions about the cross I was carrying. Uh, Fred apparently is one of the folks who's out there carrying a, a wooden cross with uh, Are You Ready emblazoned on the cross beam. It, it got the point... Got to the point where I asked him what he thinks happens after someone dies. He answers, you die and you rot away. And then he was silent. No mention of anything religiously linked, which I usually use to transition into sharing the gospel. Basically, I got stumped. I get stumped when I don't have the person leading me with their personal beliefs, and they just sit there in silence, just kind of giving them a blank stare. It never occurs to me how to transition from the answer he gave me uh, when he sits in silence after that to the supernatural. I guess I don't want to just blurt out God or Jesus as this mere mention has driven some people away. Well, we never want to be afraid to mention the name. Uh, just wondering how you handle this. All right, so in a nutshell, the question, the question is, you ask somebody what's going to happen to them when they die, they say, I'm just going to rot, that's all there is to it, and they just look at you. Where would you go from worm there, Scotty? Worm food. Worm that's food. That's what I always get. Yep. Worm, worm food. I want to be worm it's, food. You just become worm food, and that's it. And they're proud of it. Yeah. Um, a, a transition I use is, have you ever been wrong? Um, and I'll use, uh, you know, if I have the flip chart and Paris in the spring, bird in the hand, once in a lifetime, take them through that. Or if you can quickly remember, uh, spell the word silk, what do cows drink? And they say milk, and you say, do they, ha do they eat cereal with their milk, or do they just drink the milk? And you can uh, do things like that, but basically everybody is easily misled. Don't trust your heart. Right. So. You know, there's, there are some very basic questions that uh, in law enforcement we use when investigating a crime. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. And uh, when someone uh, says that to me, well, I'm just going to rot, I'm just going to be worm food. We get that a lot. Uh, why do you believe that? You know, or how do you know that? Mm, yeah, and because mo uh, many times the person has never thought beyond that cavalier answer. They, mm. That's the thought they formed in their mind. They've never really tried to justify that way of thinking. So press them a little bit on it and say, well, why do you, why do you believe that? Mm -hmm. And that will often lead into, you know, more detailed conversation. Chad, what do you think? I think sometimes we can overcomplicate these things. It's, it's actually really simple. If they say, well, I just believe we're going to be worm food, we're going to rot in the ground. Well, let us suppose there's a heaven or hell. Do you think you're good enough to go to heaven? There you go. You're right on into it. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, sort of an in-house thing for your own knowledge. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says that God set eternity in their hearts. So when somebody tells me that they think they're just going to be worm food or the ground is it, uh, I think they're lying because either let God be true and every man a liar. God says he's put eternity in their hearts, and so it is. And same as uh, Romans 1, uh, it's uh, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. So you might not be able to get them to utter it with their mouth and admit it face to face with you. 
But if you go ahead and you take them through the law, you say, let us suppose there is a heaven or hell. Let us suppose you were to die today in the condition that you're in. Uh, you're going to be speaking really to that person. They just don't want to admit it on the surface. They're saving face in front of you. But man, you're rocking them. You know, that law, it plows that conscience. All right. And then uh, Fred asked a second question, yeah. uh, building on the first one he asked. Uh, a second guy came up joining the first, obviously offended by the cross I was carrying and just had such pleasant sarcasm intended things to say. Uh, I tried to get words in, but he, along with the first guy, who was obviously his friend, were belligerent, uh, using obscene amounts of uh, profanity and blasphemes. My group and I just let him vent, as it seems that's all he wanted to do. I, I know I did not handle the situation well at all. Mainly, I was just amazed that what was happening was happening right there in front of me. So maybe it was the first time he had that kind of angry, confrontational heckler. My friend and I were able to get off a few questions but it didn't lead anywhere. I kept trying to figure out ways to initiate the good test or bring God into it, but it became obvious this wasn't going to go anywhere. Any advice for a situation like that? Yeah. And we, we do see that quite a bit. Someone who just wants to spew, they have no interest really in engaging you in conversation. Right. Um, I... I'll ask him a question, uh, why are you so antagonistic towards God? What is it about this subject that makes you so angry? Um, is there some particular sin that, uh, that, that makes you feel like you feel guilty or have a give you a guilty conscience and then you can go into it. Right. I mean, do you lie or steal or you having sex out of marriage or what is it? Why uh, were you brought up in a Christian home? And uh, all of these things I've seen Ray do many times. Yeah, yeah. and and Ray Ray is a well, he's a master at it. I mean, he's able to he's able to talk people off the ledge, so mm -hmm. to speak. You know, he just has a a way about him where he is able to take the angriest heckler, and by the end of the conversation, they're hugging each hugging each other. Yeah. You know? Well, genuine concern, showing genuine concern instead of reacting to uh, their attitude and getting. Uh, you know, upset by that um, can make a big difference too. I mean, we're out there to share the gospel. We care about these people, and we're we're trying, we're giving them a warning. And uh, so it's not so much uh, winning the argument or convincing them this. We're trying to warn them that there's danger ahead. What happens when you die? You're going to face God in judgment. And then what are you going to do on that day? Yeah. You know, and there are a lot of unbelievers out there, too, who are going to try to justify their unbelief uh, on the backs of the hypocrisy of professing Christians. And sometimes people will be out there, they'll hear you preaching, they'll automatically assume you think you're holier than thou, and so they're going to try to bait you into an argument or a fight so they can have their aha moment. See, I don't believe in Christianity because look at the way you're talking to me. Mm -hmm. Now, I've caught people trying to do that with me, and, and I've told them, look, if you... Uh, when you stand before God, you are not going to be able to use my sin to get yourself out of God's wrath and God's judgment. You're going to be judged on your account. But keep your cool. Um, don't let them bait you into responding in kind. Mm -hmm. Chad, what do you think? Well, I got a lot of thoughts on this one. Looking at the situation here where the, the fellow is saying that this guy just, it seems like he just wanted to vent and that's all he wanted to do. So we're not having any breakthrough with this person Sure, we certainly care about this person's eternity and where they're going to go, but now this crowd of 20 people and potentially turning into 200 people with somebody that's really running their mouth and making a spectacle of themselves, you know, it'll, it'll draw a crowd naturally. You've got to take into consideration now, is this person going to be a hindrance that causes other people to not hear the gospel if I just focus all of my attention on them? Mm -hmm. In fact, sometimes hecklers will purposely try and single you out and try and get you to come down off the box and talk with them on the side, which pulls you away from preaching the gospel to Very all true. of those people. So there's a few things you could do. First, let the person just go. Let them vent. You didn't do anything wrong by letting them vent. That'll draw the crowd. If it's possible to have a conversation with them, have at it. But if it's not possible, uh, I've got a few things along the way. One thing is you can call upon the crowd and ask them, folks, would you like this person to be quiet for a little bit so that I can maybe get my words in or maybe I can ask a question or answer a question? And usually, I, I can't think of a time where it hasn't happened, the crowd will resoundingly say yes and there will be shock you know, in the eyes of the person that's doing that heckling and, and just talking nonsense because they thought – that they had the crowd on their side, and that typically will cause them to quiet down. Another thing that Ray does sometimes, if somebody's 
just talking nonsense is for a moment he'll just break their attention by saying, that's a nice T-shirt you have on, by the way. And mm-hmm. they'll go, oh, you know, thanks. Yeah. And it chills them out. It calms them down. Or if you have friends that are with you and they're out in the crowd, uh, it would be good for one of them, and you guys can talk about this before you go out. You know, suppose we're in this situation. Uh, if, if we get somebody that's heckling us this way, just walk up to them and hand them a track. See if you can, you know, pull them away, try and talk to them. That also is very helpful. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the worst case scenario where it just isn't going to happen, and I've been in this situation plenty of times, I just let them know, hey, I tried with you. I tell the crowd I tried with this guy, but folks, it's no more time for a dialogue. I'm just going to go monologue and proclaim the gospel. And you might as well end with a little bit of a warning to this person that tramples underfoot the cross, has no respect for the cross. Let them know, you know, if this was just you and me, no gospel for you. There is no good news for you, only the warning of judgment in hell. But for the sake of the other people, I'm going to let them know the gospel. And uh, the last time I did that, I actually, the guy that was just talking nonsense and he was just being nothing but trouble up there on the box that was what stuck in his mind he came up to me like a half an hour later and the guy was totally broken he was like what's going on why did you say that and he wanted to know more and then we had a great conversation Mm. afterwards so it's you know it's the biblical equation you know there is no good news for those that trample underfoot the cross so all right you know a few tips there and uh one uh, piggybacking a little bit on on what chad said uh, before we move on to the next Next question. Uh, if you're part of a team and there's an open air preacher on the box and he, he or she has got a heckler that is just off the hook, don't assume that the person on the box wants you to take that person away. Uh, make sure you have some type of understanding uh, before you go out and hit the street. There, there's uh, nothing that'll ruin an open air quicker than Christians rushing to the aid of an open air, open air preacher. So make sure you coordinate with whoever's on the box. Uh, you know, have some type of hand signal or, or a look or a word or something that says, hey, I'm either ready to get down off the box or, hey, can you, you know, try to do a one-to-one with that guy so I can continue to preach? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, we don't run into that problem at Huntington Beach so much because we uh, let the speaker answer and take care of the situation. I think uh, um, part of my response had to do with, you know, you get this one-to-one. Too. You sure do. Yeah. And uh, what kind of response do you have towards that? And uh, open air is certainly a different dynamic. And Chad did a great an- uh, gave a great answer to that one. All right, Scotty, the next one's right up your alley. This one, um, I apologize in advance for mispronouncing the name. Uh, Sioban Carr from Michigan. What kind of camera and sound system do you employ to make your videos? What do yeah. we use out there on the streets? Well, we're using a uh, Sony handheld and it's expensive, um, so my suggestion, is Sony's pretty good and reliable, is uh, look at Sony or Canon or JVC and spend the most that you can spend. Everybody has a budget, and uh, that's always uh, the difficulty. But, um, and I would go digital if I could, rather than tape, because it's easy to transfer and... Um, uh, and the other suggestion I would make would be an investment in a microphone, a handheld microphone, because you'll get better sound. And with interviews, that's r- really important. With the microphone on the camera, it picks up everything, and that's not as desirable. So those would be my comments. How about a uh, windsock for the camera? Is that important? Yeah. Uh, I mean, for the microphone, rather? Uh, yeah, it's like a windscreen, um, a foam windscreen. Uh, you can find those at Radio Shack or places like that. Also, the cable that would go from a microphone to a handheld camera. Um, if that's something you want to do, you need to uh, uh, pick a camera that has a, a jack that you can plug a microphone into. Mm-hmm. Chad, what do you think? While we're on the topic, I know the person just asked about, I think, camera and audio, but they're going to need to edit the footage as well, so maybe we can uh, throw at them. If you have a a Macintosh, I think Macs come with an editing program called iMovie. That's what I started with. And what we use here at the ministry uh, for editing is called uh, Final Cut Pro. Uh, That is a little pricey, but they have a, a sort of inferior version of it that seems to have many, many, many of the capabilities. In fact, I have a hard time finding out what Final Cut Express doesn't have that Final Cut Pro does have, but Final Cut Express is very affordable and uh, very similar to what we use here at the ministry. 
Uh, that's for Mac, so cool. I don't know so much about the PC end. I know there's Adobe Premiere. I have no idea how much that costs. Well, uh, most PCs come with Windows Movie Maker, which, mm -hmm. uh, again, if you're just starting out and right. you want to do some very basic editing uh, so that you can get something up on YouTube, uh, that is a standard And program. there's tutorials on YouTube sure. and stuff Everywhere. for all of these things, yeah. so you can learn. All right, one more. is This one's from Jeff. Jeff is serving in the Army. Thank you very much, Jeff, for serving... Uh, our country and making it possible for us to do programs yeah, like absolutely. this uh, freely. So we appreciate your service. Now he says, I'm young in the faith and even younger in scripture, uh, though voracious. He reads a lot. And wondering if I should quit the field of battle I'm on, my home church. At my own church, I seem to be introducing the Bible to many of my peers for the first time. And I'm bumping up daily against word of faith poison. The head pastor seems to favor quiet appeasement in the name of non-division. I keep acquiescing to his orders. The associate pastor is a close friend of mine and seems doctrinally sound, but also soft. It's uh, partially out of respect and love for the associate pastor that I have remained silent, and it's partially out of love of my friends there that I have remained present. Question lingers, though. I know God placed me where I am. I can see some fruit in the battle for sound doctrine, but I've told God I would much rather go down the road to a place where I know the teaching is solid and that I'm only remaining on the field because I await his order to withdraw. I find myself wondering what such an order might look like and if you might have insight as to such. I have many friends in the church, and I don't want to abandon my friends to the wolves, but the fight is wearing on me, and my platoon of direct supporters seems to consist of my wife, another couple, and a solitary elder who stands in direct opposition to the, the heresy. All right, Jeff. Uh, Jeff is thinking in terms of battle, which certainly makes sense for someone serving in our military, but we are in a spiritual fight. Mm -hmm. He's in a church uh, where the gospel isn't uh, being properly taught. What would your advice be? You know, you've gone to a few different churches in your Christian life yeah, trying to find a home. And, and uh, rather than uh, speak against a church or anything, sure. I, I, I certainly was in that situation. And, uh, and had the exact same question as Jeff does, how do you know when to move on? Because, you know, uh, I if, if a, a church body uh, has the different members in it for uh, the benefit of the body, and uh, they need that influence, a right influence, so who's going to do it if not you? And so you certainly need to be willing to stay if that's what, uh, if God's not moving you on. And uh, so I spent two and a half years praying for the leadership and, and pastor and stuff. I eventually did move on. And when I did, um, uh, the Lord led me through that. And you don't have to worry about missing the message. Um, the circumstances change or you, you end up moving or w whatever happens, uh, it, it, it's going to be evident and so um, pay attention to where you are and try to do the best that you can. Uh, it's club frustration all over again. Yeah. And um, uh, keep your nose to the grindstone and keep sharing your faith and don't let that get in the way of it. Yeah. Now, if, if uh, Jeff, if your situation is such where the gospel is not being preached, uh, you know, there, there are many churches that don't, un don't understand biblical evangelism and each right. of us as individuals, we're in those places too. We, you know, all of us, well, certainly you and me, yeah. uh, we were Christians for years before the light bulb went on uh, as to yeah. biblical evangelism. And so we ought to exercise love and patience for our, our pastors, our leaders, and uh, the members of our churches. But if you're in a place where the gospel is not being preached, you're not really in a church. You're in a social club for religious people who think they're Christians. And so I think it would be time uh, to move on if the gospel is not being preached. If you're in a biblical church, if, uh, if the leadership is biblical, um, and, but you don't agree on every point of doctrine, well, you're not going to find the perfect church in, in that sense. And if you find a church that agrees with you on everything, there might actually be something wrong yeah. with that church. No, it's not perfect anymore. Yeah. All right, Chad, do you have anything on that one, or should we move to the transition? Well, just like you said, you know, if the gospel is not being preached there, it's, it's time to move along. If there are certain particular teachings here and there that you don't necessarily agree with, then, you know, you ought to stay, especially with this in mind, that you say, I know God placed me where I am. If God's placed you there, you know, and there's some, somewhere else where you want to go, 
I mean, I can't count the times in the Bible where God's using a man and the man doesn't want to be in that place, but he has to stay there if that's where God wants him. And that's what it is to be a living sacrifice. Just as Jesus Christ was a sacrifice for us once and for all up there on the cross, we're called to be a living sacrifice. So I'm not saying stay there, but if you're saying God put you there and you know you're supposed to be there based off of, you know, God's basically plan for you, well then being a living sacrifice is your reasonable service, what Romans 12 uh, would point out. And uh, a funny thing about those living sacrifices, Ravi Zacharias would point out, is uh, they tend to sometimes like to, they, they like to crawl off the altar. Hmm. It's like a joke. Okay. <laughs> All right. A good one. <laughs> okay. It, uh, the show is quickly slipping away. Uh, we do want to get to the chat room, but someone was kind enough to send us in a video of a commercial and Double Dog dared us to come up with a transition into the gospel. Take a look at this. Driven by primordial instinct, the salmon hurled themselves upstream. Given the countless hazards of this journey, only the fittest, richest tasting red salmon make it this far. Which is why others, driven by instincts of their own, are waiting. John West endures the worst to bring you the best. All right. Well, Scotty. Now, since, why since are you calling on me? Because <laughs> you're our guest. Ah. And, and uh, well, and, you know, you, uh, you're a mentor to me, and you got me open air preaching, and so I thought as a gift to you, I would let you transition oh, well, this thank first. You very Go much. right ahead, man. <laughs> I would. I, so has somebody shown me that video or told me the story? I guess either way, yeah. I, would, I would say, boy, that was inspiring. Speaking of that, what happens when you die? <laughs> okay. All right, Chad. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even attempt it. <laughs> yeah, even this isn't it. my thing. No, know. you don't want to play? No, you really, really don't want to play. I don't got huh? anything, you know? All right. Jesus Ex says, you know, extra sets of kettlebells me, for I'll you today, you mister. Of men. He's trying to be a fisherman that goes you after know, one, salmon. One of the things that was <laughs> mentioned in, in that short commercial was uh, uh, people acting uh, according to their primitive natures. And uh, each and every one of us was born with a sin nature, mm -hmm. and, and we all act accordingly. Uh, have you ever told a lie? Yeah, I have. Well, then you're living according to your sin nature, yep. and so on, and go through the law and then into the gospel. Yeah. Yeah, let's quickly move to the chat there's room. There's always a way. Yeah, wow. Okay. <laughs> Keep right. them coming, though. Keep them coming. Hey, look, we make no promises that they're always going to be good. Um, it depends on the material we're given to work with. Sometimes it'll be funny. Sometimes it won't. And... Uh, Let's go to the chat room. Hurry, hurry. Is it Two ever minutes. biblical and Christian to defend your honor, your wife's, friends, family, etc., honor with physical violence like, that's it, meet me outside and we will settle this? Uh, well, I think that's different. I think challenging someone to fight because your ego has been bent in some way or someone close to you has been insulted, uh, I think scripture is pretty clear that the way to go is not to meet somebody outside. Uh, but uh, self-defense, someone comes breaking into my home, mm. threatens me and my family, they may not make it out alive. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, well, um, you certainly feel like that inside. And, um, but, it, you know, if you just take a minute to think about uh, where that scenario is going to lead and what happens afterwards, I mean, if you get in any kind of physical altercation, um, it's, there's, there's no good scenario out of that, mm -hmm. but, um, we're, we're called to, uh, be as Christ, to be, um, uh, servants and uh, Tony brings up the point of, um, self-defense. I certainly would, uh, defend any of my loved ones physically if I needed to, but I would, uh, I, I would try to avoid any physical confrontation. Yeah. Chad, I know you got a thought or two on this one. I know we're running out of time, but you always want to go at the lesser of the two evils. If, if there's any way out of this without having to physically overcome this person, then don't do it. You know? But if they're trying to harm somebody that you're with, that you care about, you know, just sitting back and doing nothing, I think would be even more evil on your part just to let it happen when you were capable of doing something about it. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I, I've been told that I need to smile more. Somehow I need to smile more while I'm, uh, you know, talking about taking someone out who breaks into my home. I oh, yeah. 
You're like I, envisioning it. No. <laughs> if somebody ever broke into my home, I know what I would do. Oh, a funny, funny thing. Ha- uh, we uh, we, <laughs> we do want to get to a couple more. That mug. <laughs> 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 funny thing happened last night. Uh, a new version of Ding Dong Ditch took place at my home last night. We get oh. a loud knock on the door, and uh, that was so loud. I, l- I look through the people and I don't see anything. Right, so, so no. So I uh, so I open the so I open the door and here's a giant box. Uh, for a vacuum cleaner just sitting there with an envelope sitting on top, right? And I said to Maria, I said, Maria, did you order a vacuum cleaner? No. And then this little, like, nine or ten-year-old kid jumps out of the box. Oh, boy. Yeah, right? Well, and I see his friend or his older brother, you know, we live in a condo and there's stairs leading up to the upstairs uh, unit, and I see him, like, peeking through the slat in the stair. So, so the little kid goes running off with the box, and, uh, and I step out and immediately turn around to confront the young man who's on the stairs. And I said, you're in a bad place, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I am. So, but I thought that was pretty interesting. Foolhardy, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful he was young. And, and uh, <laughs> where, how do we get there? I, I was wondering know. the same thing. Really? <laughs> never happened to me. I've well, never had my house toilet ha- papered. You've never had your house toilet papered? I shouldn't You want to give your that. address? <laughs> I mean, we were talking about intruders, like harming your family. Intruder alert. And somehow yeah. now we've gotten to ding-dong ditch. Yeah. All right. Hey, we need, cool to, we need to find out who the winners are from uh, today's uh, drawing. We are out of time. No. No? Do it. Okay. Well, that's up to you. <laughs> Winner Rebel. number one, Rod McCaslin. And two, Chris Oest. Oost. 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 And three, Andrew Alwander. So it looks like uh, Missouri, Pennsylvania, and Alabama, Indeed. respectively. We will be sending you a copy of uh, Cowboys and Indian, uh, our DVD, uh, with uh, Ray Comfort uh, interviewing some rodeo participants mm. and a American Indian. So, uh, Who but we are. He gets upset, by the way. He does get upset. You know what yeah. Charlie Sheen would say? One man war. What would, Char- what would Charlie Sheen Got say? Those people. What? He would say, winner! <laughs> <laughs> Cricket. Cricket. Oh, cricket. just because your joke was ho- or your story was horrible about the whole ding dong dish thing, you know. That wasn't horrible. That was Charlie that Sheen was corner. Whoa, <laughs> I see. Wow, we got a little bit of a rebellion coming out of the atheist hole today. Tiger blood drip. Charlie from my fangs. Sheen impersonation. Charlie tonight. Sheen impersonation. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, that was that's a great note to to end on right there. You know, Chad and I arguing. So, uh, <laughs> Scotty, we want to. Hey, the chat th- room likes it. It's the chat room likes it. Oh, well, yeah. You know what? The show is about them. So, um, we are. We are thankful that they like that. Uh, Scotty, thanks for being on the program today. On behalf of My Scotty pleasure. and uh, Chad, uh, it's Friday. We are done. I hope you're going to go out and share the gospel with someone this weekend. It's supposed to rain here in Southern California, but we're praying That's against that. We're hoping it, that it doesn't, so we can go out and open air preach. Uh, but until Monday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, right here on this channel, be encouraged, strengthened, and unafraid. Proclaim the gospel. Living Waters presents On the Box.